Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Um, it is good to have you here. It's the first Sunday of Advent, and so we're going to start the service today as we go through the next four, five weeks, six weeks actually, with the lighting of the Advent candles. And so we just light one candle today. We light this candle in hope. May the light it gives become a sign of the end of darkness. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which us, your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he will come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing the light of the world. You can stay seated while we sing. Personalizing it to our 
specific situation. So let us turn to God in prayer. Listen to us, O Shepherd of Israel. Hear us, leader of your flock. Seated on your throne above the winged creatures, reveal yourselves to the tribes of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Manasseh. Reveal yourself even to us here in South Africa. Show us your strength. Come and save us. Bring us back, O oh God. Show us your mercy, and we will be saved. How much longer, Lord God Almighty, will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have given us sorrow to eat, a large cup of tears to drink. You let the surrounding nations fight over our land. Our enemies insult us. Bring us back, Almighty God. Show us your mercy, and we will be saved. <coughs> Turn to us, Almighty God. Look down from heaven at us. Come and save your people. <coughs> Come and save this great vine that you planted. This young vine you made grow so strong. Our enemies have set it on fire and cut it down. Look at them in anger and destroy them. Preserve and protect the people you have chosen, the nation you made so strong. We will never turn away from you again. Keep us alive and we will praise you. Bring us back, Lord God Almighty. Show us your mercy and we will be saved. Let's sing together the Lord's Prayer. And come down, how the mountains would quake in your presence, as fire causes wood to burn and water to boil. Your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. 
When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked! For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow your godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we all, we are all your people. Our next reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, from verse 3 to verse 9. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. We start with the readings from the Gospel of Mark, as this is the year of Mark in the lectionary. We've been doing the Matthew up until last Sunday, and so we this is the first reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, and I read from verse 28. Let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branches become green and tender, and it starts putting out leaves. You know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you will know that the time is near, ready to begin. Remember that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows, however, when that day or hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, nor the Father, only the Father knows. Be on watch, be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It will be like a man who goes away from home on a journey and leaves his servants in charge. 
after giving them each one their own work to do, and after telling the doorkeeper to keep watch. Be on guard then, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. It might be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or at sunrise. If he comes suddenly, he must not find you asleep. What I say to you then, I say to all, watch. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, as we listen to your word, may it touch you down into our hearts and lives. May it be something that we can build our lives on. May it guide us to life in all its fullness. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord and our God. Amen. It's 27 days till Christmas. Are you ready? <laughs> Have you bought your presents? Or at least decided what to buy? Is your house nicely decorated? Have you planned your Christmas parties? We spend a lot of time getting ready for Christmas. One of the one things that we maybe don't spend enough time getting ready for Christmas is getting ourselves ready. We teach the little children that they better be a good boy or girl. They mustn't be naughty because if they're naughty, Father Christmas is not going to come. Or if Father Christmas does come, he's only going to give me a small, insignificant little present. But I wonder how seriously we take getting our lives in order as we prepare for Christmas. Advent is a time not just for getting ready for Christmas. Advent is also a time for getting ready for the day of the Lord. The day the Lord comes to us. Oh, we read. When he comes unexpectedly, when he comes at, in the afternoon, late at night, or early in the morning, will we be ready? I want to focus this advent on see, see what we need to see. The more light, look at the fig tree. The fig tree tells you when summer is near. You can see by the, the green shoots, by the leaves starting to fall. And when you see the signs, you know that summer is near. What signs must we look for to know that the day of the Lord is near? And then Jesus uses another parable. Another illustration to show us that we need to be ready. And that is all the servants who have been given charge. When's he coming? When's he coming? No. It's by looking at what is needing to be done now in the house. When the master returns and the servant runs out to him and says, Welcome, I'm ready for you to come. And the master looks and says, why are there so many weeds in the garden? Why is there so much dust on all the furniture? Why is there a pile of dishes in the sink? Why is there a bunch of washing that has not been done? Why are there 
there's so many broken windows and things around. Why is the fence lying down? You're not ready. We need to be understand that readiness is not about being ready for the future, but about seeing the signs of what needs to be done right now. Can we see the signs that help us to be ready? Can we see the weeds? Can we see the dust? Can we see what needs to be done? So the signs, I want, to, I want to highlight four signs for us today. And the four signs, the first one is personal sin. Do you see that you are a sinner in need of help? Lost without God, without hope. Do you see your own sinfulness? Many people are fast asleep. The Lord is coming. And when he comes, is he going to find us fast asleep to the fact that we are sinners? Is he going to find us thinking we're good people? You know, I'm a good person. I know there are some things wrong in my life, but I can fix it. I know that, I know that there's good things that I'm You're not ready for this guy. Don't sleep through your sinfulness. Thinking all is okay. For when the Master comes, we'll all have to give an account to him. We'll all have to stand before God and, and give an account. The first sign that the coming of the Lord is near, all hope is gone, and we are terrified of the Lord's coming. Are you terrified of the Lord's coming? Or are you fast asleep? The first sign the Lord's coming is a discussion that I've come across for a lot of many people is just how bad things are. And there are so many people that are talking about how bad things are, how the pandemic our eyes will be opened and we'll see just how bad things are in the world. Some are asleep. They sleep thinking all is fine. And others are asleep saying when the Lord comes, he'll fix it. Can you imagine the servant running up to the master saying, Welcome, master, I'm ready for your coming. And the master sees all the weeds and all the stuff, and the servant says, I was waiting for you to come. <laughs> Are we waiting for the coming of the Lord to fix the world? Or do we realize that God has entrusted this world in our hands? God has given us a task, care for this beautiful, wonderful, fantastic planet that I place in the world. The more we can see that, that the world is in a bad place and we can do something about it, the sign that the kingdom of God or the day of the Lord is near, is near. The third sign that I want to speak about in the day, about the day of the Lord being near is the sign of hope. Now, of necessity, this.
So we need to know we sinners, we need to know we live amongst sinners before we can see the hope that is before us. And the hope that is before us is that we have a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Yes, tremble at the day of the Lord coming. But there is hope. There is hope that the God we meet is a merciful, gracious, loving, forgiving God. A God who gives us a chance at being remade, at being renewed. A Father whose love says, while you are caught up in your sin, I give myself to you in love. A God who says that while you are bound up and, and condemned in your sin, I die for you on the cross. A God who says, while there is still so much rubbish inside of us, I'm there to clean you out, to take out of you this heart of stone and put into you a heart of flesh, to take out of you this, this cold unwillingness. When you hear this message, when this message of hope comes through to us, you are near the day of the Lord. It's a sign that the day of the Lord is close. And as we respond, as we, we through faith and trust in God, turn to Him for help and are made new by the work of God in our lives, The third sign, and the fourth sign, becomes visible. And the fourth sign of the nearness of the kingdom of God, of the day of the Lord, the fourth sign is you and me. Are we a people of hope? Are we a people that, that take God's hand and work together in making this world a better place? Are we active? Are we hands that reach out to those that are in need? Are we feet that are willing to go to those that need us most? Are we ears? willing to listen to those that nobody else will listen to? Have we got words of courage and encouragement to give to those that are struggling? We become the signs of hope when we become part of this movement of God of making all things new. When we fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, God can use us to change this world around, to make a difference in this world. Are we these people of hope? So these four signs, the first sign, I am a sinner in need of grace. I live in a world in need of desperately being helped. But there's a God full of grace, compassion, and mercy. Who takes those who turn to Him in faith and joins with them in making this world a better place. Our vision, the kingdom of heaven, implemented. Yeah. May God bless us as we see the signs of the coming of the Lord. Amen. Turn to God in prayer.
when we need Lord to wake up to the reality of our own lost situation. Would you shake us? Would you slap us? Would you do whatever it is? Pour cold water on us, whatever you need to do, Lord, to wake us up. Where we know the depth of our sin, where we know just how far short we have fall of your glory, where we know just how helpless our situation is, may we turn to you and find in you our hope, our salvation. Where we are in a world that is frankly falling apart, in the midst of a pandemic that millions of people are dying from, in the midst of a situation where, where violence, especially against women and children, is just so rough, in a situation where corruption is, is just so much a part of our world, in a situation where the climate is just being destroyed by our pollution and the things that we have done to destroy our planet. In this world, we know we desperately need you, Lord. Wake us up to the fact that all being done on earth as it is in heaven. And help us, Lord, to go out and become messengers of hope. Wherever there is darkness, may we shine the light of hope. Wherever there is need, may we give a hand. Wherever there is loneliness, may we give a presence. Wherever there is rejection and oppression, may we give a welcome and love. Use us, Lord. Don't let us sleep while the world goes to help. We ask this all in and through the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. <laughs> we sing our closing song. Um, the race that long in darkness